on guys, I'm back with another Lucha Underground review for episode 2 of season 4. A very good episode tonight. First of all, we started out the episode with Son of Havoc, Killshot, and The Mac. All standing in the ring, the trios champions are set for a trios tag titles match. And I'm sitting here like, what, what trio is going to get the title opportunity? Is it the Rabbit Tribe? Is it the Reptile Tribe that we seen take out the mayor of Slamtown last week? Is it the mayor of Slamtown himself and his boys? Of course, that being the Worldwide Underground. Of course, don't forget Taya. No, it's none of them. In fact, Famous B has three new clients. I was expecting this to be Tejano and Dr. Wagner Jr. that were going to be announced. Plus, maybe like he does something funny and throws Bridget in there for some reason. Or Brenda. I guess it's Bridget. Brenda. Whatever. Who cares? <laughs> I figured he threw her in there with those other two guys. No. Time to showcase three new talents that also signed this year. First of all, there was some big muscular guy that I've never heard of before, and I don't know who the hell he is. He was like big man something. So there was him. There was Sammy Guevara, which of course we seen an impact a while back in the X tournament, or the X Cup, which was very interesting to see Sammy Guevara and Luch Underground. And then the third and final partner, which was announced as Jake Strong. I was like, who the, who the fuck is the savage Jake Strong? And then he comes out and I'm like, oh shit, that's Jack Swagger. And the crowd had the same reaction too. They just started popping and freaking out. Like, there was a huge holy shit chant for Jack Swagger. Which I was surprised. I don't even know why Swagger is that over, to be frankly honest. I was never that much of a fan of him myself, but I guess people do like Jack Swagger a lot. He was very over. That was the first match of the night, and that was by far the best match of the show, in my opinion. Now, most of Matanza and Pentagon I didn't really get to see because uh, the TV was fucking up. But nonetheless, you know, was, uh, yeah, the TV was messing up. Matanza and Pentagon, I'm sure, had a good match. I didn't see the majority of it. I did see Pentagon hit the uh, lung blower into the uh, code breaker, which is really cool. Matons, I know, no sold a lot of shit, which is very interesting. Pentagon ended up beating him and retaining his title, which I expected, which is probably why that match wasn't as good, in my opinion, or in my opinion, as the first one. And of course, in the middle of the show, we also had Drago facing Dragon Azteca Jr., which was a very good match for the one of the seven medallions. We're already getting the Gift of the Gods meda medallions given away here. Time to crown a Gift of the Gods champion. That first meta medallion, of course, captured by Dragon Azteca Jr. They had a very good match. It was very Lucha Libre-esque. It was the Lucha Libre match of the night. Like, a lot of high-flying spots, a lot of high spots, a lot of Lucha moves. Just a lot of that. Very good match, in my opinion. There was that cool spot where Drago and Dragon Azteca were both rebounding off the ropes back and forth, ducking clotheslines. And eventually, Dragon Azteca slid out under the ring, or under the ropes, only to get caught by Drago with a suicide senton, which was cool. Um, but other than that, like, there was a nice spot to where Drago rebounded off the ropes and went for the uh, Dragon Flayer, I believe is what he calls it. The, uh, that, that pinfall maneuver, I, I keep forgetting what it is. I know I messed this up last season in my reviews, but... The, that thing that he does to where he like hooks the leg and he's like the crucifix with the leg hook. Uh, Drago went to do that. There was a few uh, interferences by Thunder Rosa, which was interesting. Cobra Moon, I mean. Whoops. Have they even let her wrestle at all? Like in the past two seasons of Luge Underground? It seems like she's always just on the outside. Kind of like Taya does that a lot too for some reason. She doesn't wrestle that much. She wrestles a lot more than Cobra Moon does. So we had her on the outside, she interfered, of course that did not pay off in Drago's favor. Afterwards out comes Johnny Mundo and Taya. Taya gets in the ring, attacks Cobra Moon, lays her out. Johnny Mundo with a kick to the nuts from behind on Drago, which I'm just like, are they supposed to be turning face? Maybe not, maybe they're both heels. But the commentary almost made it sound like that Johnny and him were still heels and like the reptile tribe were somehow faces. Even though they cheap shot at Johnny first last week. I mean, I don't really, I don't really know what to think about. Maybe both teams are just heels. Maybe they'll throw the rabbit drive in for the face, and it'll be a triple threat. We know. Speaking of triple threats, next week's main event, more than likely, is a three-way uh, grave consequences match with Jeremiah Crane, 
your boy Mil Muertes, and of course Phoenix. That's going to be a great triple threat in that match. I got Mil Muertes, man. Anytime Mil Muertes is in the ring, Lucha Underground, you gotta pick Mil. Mil's like the one of the main guys on Lucha Underground. So you, all you, got, you always gotta pick Mil. Um, and now moving on to the first match of the show. I saved this for last. I just did this whole review backwards. But I saved the first for last based on the fact that I watched all the first match. The first match was very good. It was my favorite match of the night. You started the match off with kill shot one on one with Sammy Guevara. Great job by Vampiro and Matt Striker on commentary, like usual, talking about how Son of Havoc was just given the title, and that doesn't really make him a champion, is what Vampiro said in his eyes. It just makes him like an interim champion until they figure out what to do, which I completely agree with that. And then Striker was talking about how he was surprised they were working well together tonight, and Vampiro laid the line, or Matt Striker put the line out there like. Uh, they're of course trying to retain because if they retain the title, then they make more money because they're champs. So then Vampiro had to say, well, let's get a tag team partner, let's get in there then. I thought that was funny, I was just sitting there like, yeah, yeah, maybe they need to call up like, uh, I don't know, Matt Stryker used to wrestle, maybe. Maybe they get him in there and then get Josh <laughs> No, uh, no, that would be terrible. Um, anyways, moving on, the... The first match of the show was obviously the best one in my opinion. Jack Swagger had that sick pop-up, or Jake Strong, I should say, had that sick pop-up uh, Patriot Act, the ankle lock, which was really cool to see. Sammy Guevara and Killshot started this match out very fast-paced. I was very impressed with Sammy Guevara. Last week, I did a little thing where uh, I talked about who impressed me the most on the show. Sammy Guevara definitely got that this week. He had some crazy freaking flipping spots on the freaking match and it was just ridiculous man he the kill shot dropped down under him and Sammy Guevara just does a freaking 450 over him which is ridiculous uh, there was a very cool spot to where kill shot and the Mac did a pounce off the top rope a reverse pounce kill shot had him on the top rope dove off with a Death Valley driver and the Mac caught him out of midair into a pounce which was ridiculous Senna Havoc ended up picking up the victory with the shooting star press of course Jack Swagger, Jake Strong would get pissed off afterwards. Attack Famous B, attack his tag team partners, and then proceed to snap the ankle of Famous B. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes going forward. Famous B, once again, out on injury, man. That guy just can't cut it, I guess. Gonna have to go back to monetize this or something, because he's not going to be in the ring for a while now. Uh, maybe maybe Brenda can take a spot. She can answer the calls. They'd probably get a lot more calls, right, if Brenda was the one who received them, I think. Although they might not be qualified to compete with uh, Jake Strong. Anyways, uh, that's my review pretty much. Like I said, the first match of the show was the best. In my opinion, the most impressive person from this week was by far Sammy Guevara. Great debut for him on Lucha Underground. Jack Swagger did great too, don't get me wrong. That other guy didn't do much at all in the match. The other guy that was on their team, which I didn't expect him to yet. We'll have to see how he does going forward. Like I said, I don't know who he is. Other people probably do, but I'm just, just like, whatever. He's teaming with them. He did decent, don't get me wrong, but I just don't know who, they, who he is. But anyways, like I said, it was a great show this week. I thought this week's show was a lot more solid than last week. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Great show, and now let's go to the highlights, I suppose. It's just another day in paradise. Will power all get paralyzed? Lost track of how many times? Same old shit, different hell, and justified. 